So let's pray. Heavenly Father, please give me the words that you want me to speak. Please give us all ears to hear, hearts and minds that listen. And Lord, then let us obey you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Amen. So, as Jill said, and you've just heard Reuben read, today I'm going to talk about Solomon. Solomon, when I read this again, you know, all that kept coming to mind was I knew Solomon was a very wise man, okay? The wisest man that ever lived. But when I read the whole story about Solomon, I thought, gosh, there are things here that that really can help us live the way God wants us to live. He is a great example, a great pointer to the way to live with God for us as Christians. But then at the end, there's a bit of a warning. We have to keep listening and we have to keep hearing and we have to keep obeying. So that's what I'm going to talk about this morning. So Solomon, this very, very wise, wise man. And as Jill said, what is wisdom? And I've been thinking about that all week. All those, those verses and sayings and things, oh, that makes it a bit clearer to me. I've known very wise people in my life. Um, not that I'm going to name them, but I know a few of them. But they're not knowledgeable, if you like, or what I'd call intelligent. I've known a lot of very knowledgeable and intelligent people as well, who could quite honestly quote the Bible from one page to the other, who know several languages, who are wonderful in their knowledgeable knowledge. But could they make a sensible decision in their lives? No. Wisdom is, as we've all said now, is that ability to discern and to know. There's a verse in Psalms, I'm going to read it because I don't want to get it wrong. It's Psalm uh, 111, it's verse 10, and it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Okay, confession, I find fear quite a difficult word there. You see, I think of fear as being scared, frightened of being, I don't know, badly treated. Retribution, that's fear to me. How do I think of my God? I think of my God in awe and wonder, and I revere him, but I know he loves me. Do I fear him? Hmm. Okay, so that's something to think about. But if I think all these things about God, that he is amazing and all-powerful and almighty and fantastic, then of course I go to him and I ask him for guidance and help. And that is the beginning of me being wise. So yes, the beginning of wisdom is acknowledging the power and might of our Lord. And, of course, that's just what Solomon did. In verse 7, it says, Now, Lord my God, you have made your servant king in the place of my father David, but I'm only a little child, and I don't know how to carry out my duties. Your servant is here among the people you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to count or number. So give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people, and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? This great and powerful King Solomon. He'd just inherited the throne from his father David. He wasn't the first son. His first son, if you like, was a bit of a bad one. So it came to Solomon. Solomon, this great king of this amazing kingdom of Israel. And what does he do? 
He gets on his knees and he asks God for help. Please help me, God. I don't know how to do it. It's too big for me. What an amazing example to us. Is it just me? Or do you do it too? Try and do things in our own strength. How many times do we think we can do it? How many times, okay, this is definitely me, do I wake up in the middle of the night thinking, how am I going to ever do that? It's too big for me. How many times don't I turn to God as my first thing to do? How stupid. We could save ourselves so much pain and stress, only we can't turn to God at the very beginning. Okay, give you an example of me this week. Uh, my daughter-in-law has broken her foot. She's in a pot. She has two crutches, and she has a little one of one year old. And um, my son has a fairly all-inclusive, powerful job. He has to be away a lot, so there's me. It's been a very hectic week. We get up at 5.30. They live in Doncaster, so I've more or less gone over there. Uh, 5.30 in the morning, you get up to hear his happy little cries. He goes to bed about seven, and he has two what they call rubbish naps in the day. I can honestly tell you I need those naps because I'm napping too. <laughs> it's been a really difficult week. There was one music group that she'd booked us into because she was supposed to be taking him. And when we're sitting on the church hall floor and the leader says, right, mums, because there aren't many grands there, funnily enough. Right, mums, I want you to lift the baby over your head and swing them from side to side. And I'm going, giddy aunt, I don't do weights at the gym. Oh, this baby is one year old and he's heavy. And I just kept thinking to myself, I call them arrow prayers, I don't know. I just kept saying to myself, God, give me the strength to get through this day. Give me the strength to get through this day. Now, that's the good bit. The bad bit happened the Friday before all this started. The bad bit was when I go quiet, because I'm worried about something. Yes, I do go quiet, honest, when I'm worried. And I stomp about a bit. And my husband knows me ever so well, because we've been married for 51 years. And he says to me, what in heaven's name is wrong with you? He probably shouldn't use the word heavens, but he did. What in heaven's name is wrong with you today? And I said, I'm just so worried. How am I physically going to cope next week? And then I just looked into his eyes, and he looked into mine. Take it to God. For goodness sake, take it to God. Stop worrying. Take it to God. Ask him for the strength and the power and the resources and the guidance you need. But I didn't do it first thing, did I? Oh, what is it about ourselves? Is it that we're, we're too proud? Is it that we're too human? I don't know. But if only we could be like Solomon, right from the beginning, stop worrying, stop panicking, go to God. So, okay, I could finish now and we could all be really jolly and go and have, you know, next song and prayers and da 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 da, da and give you something to think about for the week. Um, but I'm sorry, I can't. I won't be very long, but I'm, you know, it is the summer. So, okay, Solomon was this amazing example. He asked God for help, he listened and he obeyed. Okay, easy, super dukes. Now, if you read the rest of the chapter, and please do, because it is an amazing picture of how wise Solomon was and how brilliant he was as a king. He built amazing palaces. He built the temple. He had forts built. People came to see him, Queen of Sheba, all that lot. They all came to see him because he was just such an amazing ruler. He wrote some psalms, he wrote some proverbs, he wrote Ecclesiastes, he wrote the Song of Songs. This was a brilliant man, and he ruled his nation. It was their golden age. But as you read on, 
you find that something started to go wrong. Something started to take his focus away from God. All this power and splendor and gold and jewels, I don't know if it was that. People came to see that. But while all that was happening, his people of his country, of his kingdom, sadly were overworked and overburdened with taxes and there was tension in the land. After Solomon's death, the kingdom split in two, to the north and the south kingdom. It divided. It was the beginning of the end, if you like, for the golden age of Israel. So why? What, what happened? Okay, yes, it could have been the, his love of the beautiful things in life that God had given to him, his power, yes, his wisdom, but I think he didn't turn from God. I don't believe he turned from God, but somehow his focus wasn't that narrow line anymore. It got a bit waffly at the edges. Other things came in and took him away from that single-minded faith and trust in God. It could have been the wealth and the wonder and everything he had. It could have been fame, okay? Everybody was coming to see him, to see this wonderful man. But there was another thing that perhaps... The first verse of chapter 3, 1 King, says, Solomon made an alliance with Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and married his daughter. That was the beginning, we're told. Solomon had, I don't know if it's true, they say about a hundred, don't know, but many, 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 many foreign wives, okay? It was his way of keeping the peace. He had an enormous lot of other countries around his borders, and he thought, super duper, if I marry daughters, sisters, why, order, all these lot, that'll keep up my kingdom safe. They won't invade us because, you know, I'm married to one of them. Good idea. Problem was, though, that unfortunately, these ladies he married came with their own cultures and their own gods. We're told they built their own worship places. They came with their own ideas. Solomon couldn't fail to be influenced. Don't know if he went to these other places of worship, but hey-ho, would have been weird if he hadn't been. Somehow, his straight, narrow view of God, his faith, his trust, all got a little bit fuzzy at the edges because he was listening to other views, other ideas, other cultures, other religions. In the end, I, I, he probably still was praying to his heavenly father. He was still probably asking for wisdom. But was he listening? Was he obeying? I think when you hear what happened to this wonderful land of Israel, I don't think he was. So yeah, the sting in the tail of this lovely story about Solomon is that it makes us think about ourselves. He had some weak spots in his life. The weak links in his chain. You know the old saying that says the chain is only as strong as the weakest link? His weak link, whatever it was, fame, prosperity, love of the good life, other gods, other cultures, the chain broke. So, okay, us. Let's, let's really bring it back to us. What are our weak links? What is it that takes us away from that wonderful narrow road we're told to follow to our Heavenly Father? 
Is it that television programme that we nearly know, but everybody watches it? Is it that book we've just got to read? Is it that time we've just got to do that? Oh, we haven't got time for prayer. We've got to do this today. You know, I can't. <laughs> I know me. Probably those were all my things. But what is it that are our weak links? Solomon, in all his wisdom, fell. <laughs> Gosh, what about us? In our humanness. Gosh, oh wow. The wisest man who ever lived fell. What does it tell us? Keep turning to God, keep listening, keep obeying. I'm sure I'm never going to appear on Mastermind anytime soon. But maybe, just maybe, if I keep turning to God, I might become a bit wiser. Amen.